All of those GWAS findings that I showed you have made it possible uh, for companies to begin to market the opportunity directly to consumers to find out their risks of uh, potential future illness. Recognizing, of course, that the risks that are possible to predict uh, by the uh, GWAS uh, results are relatively modest in their quantitative contribution. And because they do omit uh, the other heritable factors not yet discovered, they don't generally incorporate family history, which is a very powerful predictor in itself and really ought to be considered in trying to make those predictions, and uh, generally are not necessarily connected uh, with a careful sampling of environmental risks at the same time. These are very early days uh, for these kinds of predictions to be made. Uh, nonetheless, at least some members of the public are pretty interested in having this information as a guide uh, to how to practice better prevention themselves. Uh, after being skeptical about this, I decided that it would be appropriate uh, to actually go through the experience and find out what might be the experience one has uh, in getting this information about yourself. And so, uh, using an assumed name, because I didn't want these companies to know who they were dealing with, uh, I actually uh, sent DNA samples to all three of them and uh, asked uh, for the full analysis of what's going on there, at some expense, I might say, uh, to my own pocketbook, uh, although one of these, a 23andMe, is now uh, only $399, uh, the others range uh, up to a high of $2,500, depending on whether or not you get additional services in the case of Navigenics, uh, contact with a genetic counselor is provided. So. Um, I uh, sent off the DNA and I waited for a while and got uh, the results uh, over the web uh, in a month or two. And one of the things I was very interested in was to see whether they got the same answers, because presumably my DNA did not change uh, <laughs> when it went uh, to one part of the country or another. So observations. Um, the websites uh, that provide the feedback on this, I must say, are generally well designed. If you've not been and looked at the tutorials uh, provided by the company, you should do so. I think they provide mostly solid information, including explanation about the uncertainties of the predictions. They don't seem to be over-promising what it is that you can learn from this. Happily, the genotyping appears to be highly accurate. In every instance where the same comp where more than one company tested the same SNP, they got the same genotype result for me, with no exceptions. So I think that does uh, say, and we knew this, I think, already from having done the HapMap and other follow-on studies, uh, that it's pretty accurate to be able to test a particular place in your DNA and figure out whether you have a G or a T. On the other hand, uh, substantial differences exist in what information is actually included. Uh, some of these sites provide information about carrier status for recessive diseases. I found out I was a carrier for alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. I didn't know that before. And, and some include quite a long list of non-medical traits, uh, some of which are perhaps better substantiated than others. And some include ancestry, and, and some do not. The interpretations of what to make of the variants uh, that are reported back uh, also sometimes vary, even if the same SNPs have been tested. And this is a place where I think, and this is a message that's been conveyed several times, companies really ought to get together on this, uh, otherwise it is hard to understand why consumers would not begin to get a little skeptical if you have the same data and you come up with a different conclusion. What's that about? Now obviously a lot of that is about the fact that the literature is changing so quickly on these studies that depending on which particular papers you've included uh, in your analysis, you might come up with a somewhat different risk ratio for a particular variant. Uh, and again, though, it seems to me this ought to be a place uh, where some agreement about standardization of interpretation would be valuable. All of the sites uh, recommend interventions based upon your personal results, but obviously the evidence is often weak because while we have very good evidence uh, for these variants for the most part being associated with disease risk, the evidence that there's clinical utility here, that you can actually do something about that risk uh, by taking certain actions, is often missing. And also, of course, there is this question about whether people given this information will actually alter health behaviors. Did I alter my health behavior? <laughs> Well, actually I did, and I was sort of surprised at myself. Uh, when I looked at the results, um, my lab works on diabetes. I discovered that I'm homozygous uh, for the most significant di 
type 2 diabetes risk factor. Uh, and that was a surprise uh, given my own family history is lacking in individuals with diabetes. Uh, but recognizing that that might be a reason uh, to think a little bit about the fact uh, that um, I'm probably not going to live to be 150, it was a motivator uh, to perhaps begin to do some of the things I should have been doing all along. And so after getting that result and thinking about it a bit, I started an exercise program and lost 20 pounds. Now, I should have done that ahead of time for sure, but at least from this one N equals one observation, there is something about this information that does get your attention.